Open Series has arrived at the New York Finger Lakes for its second road course race of the season and nowhere else but Watkins Glen. We'll run 21 laps at the fastest track with lefts and rights in the iHeartRadio 180. The layout of this circuit provides for racing like no other, with long straightaways, tight spaces, and plenty of passing points. Turn 1, the S's, the carousel, and turn 7 are all prime chances for drivers to pounce and challenge for position, while all the cars are on edge at this treacherous raceway. Don't think for a second that the additional 4 laps will mean that the drivers plan to treat this one like a Sunday drive. They've just got more time to make things happen, and the spectators, whether camping in the infield or watching from the stands, are in for a longer show. A very familiar front row has surfaced after qualifying yesterday, where Zachary Delillo scored the pole once again with a lap that clocked in at a minute and five seconds. Starting just beside him is another qualifying merchant, Colin T, who scores his sixth career front row start. Since Daytona, he's lost a lot of his momentum. Could this be the chance to rise back to the top? As the field paces towards the start finish line, we're getting set to see a race with the perfect blend of unpredictability and technicality. Green flag is out, we're racing at the Glen. The field heads down into turn number one, where they'll be jockeying for position, trying to get ahead of one another. It'll be DeLillo getting the edge so far, but Thomas making a move on the inside. He'll have the preferred lane into the S's, and contact between Roger Ray and DeLillo will put them behind the 45 Chevrolet. On to the back stretch with the car length or two lead. Lane Thomas, not much to worry about if he takes this corner right. And he will, the next two in line, overshoot leaving room for Colin Teague in the 99 to take over on the outside. Thomas blocks and heading into turn number seven here. Teague tries a late move on the outside. Not going to work. He almost hits the wall and Lane Thomas will be the leader of lap number one. So with lap two underway, pressure being given to the 99 by Roger Ray. He has to back out just a little bit, leaving the 99 the opportunity to clear. But he's not done. He's still trying to look for a way to get around. Here's one of the prime passing opportunities. You can really pressure someone into a mistake here. And that's what Roger Ray's going to do. He'll get to the inside of the 99 and the 45 here. But now he is on the outside with the 99, giving the 45 a push. So Thomas getting a bit of help from Colin Teague, because Teague wants to keep second place. But I don't think he'll be able to, as the 49 now with the preferred lane. Ray will get to the inside here. That's Aiden Smith back there in the outside wall. Look at Freeman Jr. making a four-wide pass for that spot back there. And contact between the 49 and 45. Now Colin Teague ducks down low. Ray's going to clear. But Teague is still stalking the bumper of the 49 car. Lane Thomas has moved back to fourth, being hunted by Jay Jefferson in the 48. And he goes wide, but the 49 from the lead is going to do the same thing, but he gets enough of a charge from the outside to keep the lead. I believe no Delello now switches, gives Colin Teague the shove. But right now, not quite. To the inside of the 49 and 29 and 99 make contact into the outside wall, letting the 45 by. No, not quite. Teague didn't get past, but Delolo back to fourth. The caution is out for the first time. 
and it is both on Jado cars. Skylar Taylor, the 31 Hector Garcia, and the 25 of Stephen Colon. So the front is always chaotic, the, the back, bit of a minefield here at Watkins Glen. The first caution already out on lap number three of 21. We'll get a replay of what happened. So a bit of an unfortunate collapse here from Anjato. It all happens in one corner. Heading into turn number two, you got the 42 on the inside. I don't think the 36 was ready for that. So he heads up the racetrack into his teammate, the 31, who goes into the catch fence and rides the wall. And you'll see here, he is going to be stuck like that and towed back to pit road. We'll have a couple more angles of this airborne accident from Hector Garcia with Onjak also involved. So you see there the 42 making the move to the inside. Onjak, there was no touch. It was just a bit of a, you know, making their a hole where there not necessarily was one. And ultimately, Onjak, I guess he just wasn't prepared for that move to be made. And ended up with both him and his car getting taken out. Here's a view from the 18 of Victor Nunez. You see, heading into this corner, the 42 makes the move down low. And the 36, yeah, there's there's no way that an accident could have been avoided right there. The 42 dig back out, but just not in time. As uh, Onjak was going to come down into the racing line, but there would have been contact made there. So that is part one of this caution. There was something heading into our to the line, the race back. We'll see what happened there. All right, here's the incident with Stephen Colon in the 25. In the final corner, it's another issue with teammates as uh, Delella, or oh, wow, Goforth gets into the 25, ends up sending him into the 15 as well. Bit of a quick accident there uh, that we'll get a couple more angles of so just like that two cars on two teams taken out uh, Cologne might be able to continue on but not competitively same with the low but uh, yeah I think they're I think the 84 might have just gotten loose off the corner bit of contact with the 25 might have angered him for all we know uh, but regardless uh, that also involves Skylar Taylor who piled in late Got themselves involved in this accident. So a two-parter crash ended up bringing out the caution at Watkins Glen. And both of them involved teammates getting into each other and a very unfortunate set of circumstances for both Onjato and JJ Motorsports. We'll get back to the green flag here in a few laps Get back to green flag racing. All right, caught the restart just in time. The 49, 99, 45, 28, 29, 48, top five at the starting line. We take the restart, and Teague immediately dives down low. And bit of contact once again, heading into the second corner. We'll see what happens between these two. The 49 are really using up the 99 there. But Teague gets the help from the 45 here. Thomas probably remembered that favor that Teague did from early on. But no, he's going to move to the inside himself as they wreck in the back. Involving Kirsten Martinez, your points leader. She seemed to have gotten it straight though. So we'll see if the caution even is out. But the 45 takes over the lead. Now we will have to get a different camera angle. Yes, okay, there's the pace car with the lights on, so the caution is out. And they are racing it back. So just one lap here at Watkins Glen, and the 45 is taken back over the lead. And a crash that seems to involve the 28, and maybe some others has caused the caution once again for the second time today. With Lane Thomas leading, we'll check out what happened. 
So go forth again, involved in another one. This time, Stapleton gets put in the wall, then heads back down into Martinez, who slams the wall but keeps on going. And with really not too much damage. Some damage to the side of that car, but nothing that will completely kill the performance entirely. Here's another look at it. 84 just gets to the quarter panel at 67. Spinning him around. Yeah, it, Stapleton gets away. And even Martinez gets the car back going straight. And this is something you usually don't see here at road courses. They're usually pretty lenient with the cautions. But this time, um, uh, there's a fast area on the track. And fairly in an area that could be interrupted by some traffic with not too much runoff to be had. So that could be their reasoning behind this one. Under caution for the second time today. They're really bumper happy at Watkins Glen. It's caused a couple of wrecks here in the Finger Lakes. All right, there is the one to go. We'll have a whole lot more time to, to go over our uh, lineup for this restart. And in the lead it is... Lane Thomas, who will likely inherit the points lead after this race, is Kirsten Martinez first, hasn't been involved in the last caution. And then Garcia, he is still in this race. He's just one lap down, uh, but he was involved in that. Taken out of this one, uh, just hoping that some people DNF. Uh, only worries are Zach Dalil if he ends up winning. He is fifth, so not entirely taken out of this one, but between them... It's Colin Teague looking for his second win of the season. Roger Ray looking for his first win of his career. And Jefferson looking to return to form. Green flag back out. Ray to the inside of Colin Teague looking for second already. Oh, but he gets way tight on the inside. Has to give up the spot to Jefferson. And even Delello possibly here. Yeah, Delello goes by. So top three has created some separation. And uh, they're pretty spread out in the back, just making sure there is not another caution, but we are good. And for second is Jefferson on the 99. And Teague relinquishes P2 to Jay Jefferson. Now he's on the hunt for the lead. Off the final corner, he got kind of sideways there. Oh, same with the 8 and 71 who nearly hook each other, but that does not end up happening. A couple others do the same thing back there. In fact, I think some of them might have gotten to the grass, and they're going into these next set of corners pretty risky but back up front Jefferson lost a little bit of time on the 45 but nothing that he can't gain back and Lane Thomas without a doubt the most impressive rookie so far this season no wins yet but this could be the day as he tr uh, he leads the 48 and 99, two established winners, two established veterans. What a statement that would be from the 45. To be able to keep this lead. As Jefferson using every bit of that car, the 29, same with him. Hit the outside wall there out of turn number seven. I think Lane Thomas knows it's the middle of the race. There's no need to be desperate and pull away if the other guys are indeed making some mistakes here and there. Like through the carousel, you see the 45 take that perfectly each time. Uh, we'll see if that's the jinx here and he ends up biffing it. <laughs> but that'll be an opportunity for the 48 to take charge. Yeah, but no, it's 
Jefferson, who goes a little bit wider on exit than Thomas, leading them to be fairly evenly spaced compared to the last two times around. So this top three have been flawless thus far. Healing from four different teams, and there's Jefferson completely in the wall. And he'll be falling back big time here. Back to fourth so far, but wouldn't be surprised if he got passed again, but these two right here are getting into it. 49 and 99. Look at Teague. He's way up in the high lane. That's not how you're going to make the corner. He almost hit the inside wall like DeLello did in uh, season one where he bounced off of it and took a pretty nasty hit, but now he's into the clutches of Aiden Martin, who nearly got by Jefferson. He's looking to here. Jefferson dives it in there. But yeah, it's, it's the five who's able to get past him using the draft from Colin Teague. But now he ducks down low, fakes out Colin Teague. But now has the other line. Not so preferred lane. He gets into the wall himself, holds up Jefferson. And Jefferson's mad. He's wrangling that real round. Trying to find any way around that five. And he gets into the 3 here. So the bumper to the back of Mathis Wells. And now back to 8th, I believe, for Jefferson here. If he gets passed by Lexi Herman, but he will not so far. And with this, Lane Thomas has extended the lead all the way up to almost 1.5 seconds. So now he really knows he can just coast while everyone back here fights it out for spots. Benedict Murder the fourth tries it on the five. But Martin clears back once again. Takes it high out of seven again, giving Murdo another opportunity to pull down low, but couldn't get it at the line. But hey, to turn one, his chances are pretty good here. Almost get into each other there. I think they did. Martin looks like he'll go by. Clearing on the outside. And now Wells looking for an opportunity to pass. Look how low the 62 is setting up his run. Trying to get the 5 to run the top side heading to the carousel. Which he does, but he really overshoots it almost into the tire barriers. And now he's back behind Jefferson. And now even Nunez, your last road course winner. Having another top 10 outing today. But not as far as forward that he hoped. Thomas is gone with the rest of the field in the wall. The 42 almost into the inside wall back there. And there we got contact and around goes the 89, but he saves it. No caution. And Lynn Bell also on pit road. So that must have been for something that did not cause a yellow flag. Meanwhile, second and third at each other's throats. If the chance to take the lead is gone, then second's the best you can get. Look at how well the 45 runs that line compared to even the second and third place cars. A whole lot of pressure for them to try and stay ahead of each other. Or to try and pass for Colin Teague. Meanwhile... <laughs> Lane Thomas just cruising as the 49 almost licks the wall. The 62 does. And now into the wall goes the 48. Into pit road goes the 48. Spinning goes the 50, 53. And that 
is going to be a caution here. And Thomas's advantage completely gone. And this is what these guys were fighting for. Once that caution flag flies, it's all gone for the 45 of Thomas. And once the green flag flies, second place usually makes that move to the inside. Tries to get any run he can on the leader. And now these guys are fighting for who it will be. As the 45 makes a mistake, but no uh, pressure from behind for it to really mean anything. That all changes here. Where did the rest of the field... Oh, they already took the yellow flag. Okay, I thought they all wrecked. But Lane Thomas handily leads it back to the caution flag. And it looks like Teague will get second, sliding off the corner with Ray. And yes, so everyone else under caution speed already crossed the line. So Jefferson and the 53 end up making contact and going around. We get a replay of this one. There's a caution late in the race. Changes the complexity of the battle for the lead. So you have a frustrated Jay Jefferson, the 48. But also someone who's trying all he can to get spots. Knocks the 53. Gets Lexi Herman sideways. And right here, I was really worried that he was going to impact those barrels. But he ends up sliding into pit road instead. Well, the 53 spins into the inside wall. But just taps it. Does a simple spin. Gets back going. Uh, but Jefferson, a, a very close call for him. Here's another angle. It's not strange to see contact heading out of turn number Riding into turn number seven, but that was enough to get the 53 sideways and get her around as Jefferson as well makes some contact. And this right here is going to be interesting view of it. Look at how sideways that 48 got. And that translated into the 53 also going around, sending them towards the inside wall. But we've got more to review as uh, the 17 also in an accident. Lynn Bell. See what happened to them. So right here, a side-by-side -side battle down the back straightaway goes wrong as the 11 kind of pinches the 17 to the outside and then goes back inside. The 17 goes back down. And that'll be a much easier to see if we get a camera going head on. But Thomas uh, Bell into the tire barriers ends her day early. So we'll get a good view of it here. You see the, yeah, it looks like Hunter, that's the setup to going into the corner. You want the car on the outside to be up there, but yeah, Bell just contacts the quarter panel of the 11, sends her around and into the barriers. That's a tough impact for Bell, but she was out of the racing surface enough. We don't do this very often, but from the aerial coverage, the, yeah, it... Kind of looks like the 17 just made that contact at the wrong spot. Comes down into the 11. Ends up sending themselves around. An unfortunate day ended for the 17 of Lynn Bell. Wasn't running too far up front, but still want to get the car home clean. That won't happen, unfortunately. Now we're going to look for any other wrecks that happened between the second caution flag and the third. And if not, we'll be back to the restart here shortly. Almost forgot about Aiden Smith's spin, so here's how that happened. It was the same deal of Jefferson, but instead of the car on the outside getting knocked sideways, they pinch towards the outside wall, and Smith ends up spinning half around, but gets back going fine. Uh, not too much to, to see there, except for how that car ended up, how he saved it. So we'll get to that here. Under caution for the third time today at Watkins Glen. Plenty of spins before the main caution came out, and it has shaken this race up completely. We'll see if anyone can challenge Lane Thomas as they've gotten right back up to him with this caution that resets the field late in the going. Stay tuned for the finish. All right, so coming back to the green flag. 
The 45 of Lane Thomas out front, ahead of Colin Teague in the 99. Teague and Ray have been battling all day, pretty much. We'll see if they can put their differences aside and get the leader. Because now they've got the chance. So Colin Teague looking for his second win once again this season. He won the Body Armor 300, but doesn't want to be the one-win wonder. He had one win last season, looking for another. Roger Ray looking for his first. Murder the fourth also. Same thing. And Victor Nunez, who won the last road course race, looking for another one. Mathis Wells is back there. Aiden Martin, Christian Vargas, and Zachary Delo around at the top ten. Green flag back out. It's the 49 who makes the first move. And that gives the 45 an easy lead. Look at the 99 back out. Give Roger Ray the spot. And was that intentional? Because that 45, Lane Thomas got such a good restart. He knew if they battled, it would only increase the distance between them. But now heading into the carousel. Old Thomas Fair. Oh, he takes it wide. Will the others have an opportunity to pull right in? Not really. Makes a good exit, but look at these two on the outside. Trying to make something happen. Thomas goes back up there to block. Handed a two to go this time. Green flag still in the air. And out of the inside goes the 49, handing into turn number one. But he has to go back to the bumper. And here's the opportunity he needed. Caution's back out. We'll be going to a green-white checkered. But the battle for the, re the lead rages on. Give it to Ray. And now side by side for second place. Thomas goes wide again. Leaving room for T here. But he keeps the spot so far. And for the first time today, Lane Thomas will be the chaser. As Roger Ray... Leads them off of turn number seven as those two, Teague and Murder the Fourth, get into the wall, giving Nunez fourth. So we'll see what happened to bring out the caution. And uh, it doesn't look like it must have been much. But a quick look, and then... We'll get back to the the green flag and the green white checkered. All right, it's all come back around uh, to Cody Goforth, and uh, this is play, this is payback from the 25 of Stephen Cologne as the JJ Motorsports driver is kind of playing games at the back of the field, and this this brought out a caution. So uh, the officials don't really like it when you're sideways in front of the uh or in the middle of the road on the front stretch and that's what uh extended this race here so just one more look at it these two got into each other earlier in the race and tensions boiled over into late cologne spins the 84 around bringing out the fourth caution of the day we go to a green white checkered we will decide the winner of the race or extend it even further. All right, soon enough, we will be going green as this is the one to go, but the pace car does not turn the lights off until we get to the back straightaway here. And something that we haven't really talked about thus far that could come into play is fuel. And we 
I've had plenty of green-white checkers in the past, but they were at ovals, and the one green-white checkered we saw last season at a road course was none other than Road America, and Road America had pretty much everyone run out coming to take the white flag, and Thomas Pelagia from around fifth was able to take the lead and win the race because he came down pit road for an earlier issue. So fingers crossed that does not happen here today, because that was an utter fiasco. But, if not, Roger Ray, for the first time in a while, leads the field. That's the 45 of Lane Thomas, second. Third, it is Colin Teague in the 99. And fourth, Victor Nunez, who has fought his way back. And right now, fourth place and a damaged car sits in fifth it is benedict murder the fourth as he had some pretty heavy contact with colin teague heading to the restart they both got into the wall there pretty bad sixth place it is the 42 of color to strive in quite all day and uh Ray remained around the spot he's in same with mathis wells aiden smith but DeLello kind of fell from grace. He was up there contending for the lead. Now sits at the tail of the top 10, but still a pretty good opportunity to maybe gain a spot or two in points, which he most definitely will. Rounding at the top 10, it is Ricky Freeman Jr. So heading back up front, we take the green. Two laps remain. And now the 99 is the first to make the move. Unlike last time, though, Thomas doesn't give it to him. And he nails the S's here. And gets a big gap over third. And now look at Nunez pull to the inside here. He wants this podium. Road course is pretty much his, his strong suit. But now, coming to the white flag. T goes wide, leaving the 18 room. There'll be one lap remaining. Look at the charge that DeLalo has made. He was ninth before. Now, he's worked his way back up into the top five. The 45 almost in the wall, driving that car as hard as possible. One to go at Watkins Glen. Into the wall goes Orman back there. But it's these two for the win. Roger Ray and Lane Thomas. And the caution is out, but it doesn't matter. They will race to the end no matter what. And down the back stretch, Ray pulling ahead. It all depends on how his carousel goes. And he sticks it perfectly, leaving very little opportunity now left in the lap for Lane Thomas to try and close. But now. As Roger Ray rounds the final two corners. And Lane Thomas making a final charge. Will it happen here? It will not. Roger Ray captures the win at Watkins Glen. And another one for Nova Sport in the books. And that is the checkers. That is the checkered flag. We will not extend the race. That The yellow did not come out in time. That is just a error in the lap count. But Roger Ray takes home the win at the Glen. His first career gamer in our victory beats out Lane Thomas second in points, but he will be in the lead after this one. And Ray seventh, he'll jump quite a few cars, including Lexi Herman, who was in a final lap crash. And Victor Nunez fought back to get the podium spot. Ends up third. Fourth place, Kyler Sestry. 
Oh, wow. Uh, fourth place was Colin Teague. Fifth place was Kyle Sostra. That's just how they are in the order. And Betty Murder the fourth, with his damage, only fell back to sixth place. Lost one spot. Um, Colin Teague ends up in ninth. It looked like he was going to make a late charge, but he ended up uh, falling back again. And um, but between him, it is Aiden Martin and Mathis Wells and Freeman Jr. was able to hang on to 10th over Thomas Pelagia. So we'll make the results right here uh, a little quick. Some uh, notable finishers. I think, yeah, they, everyone in the top 10 really only finished up front or in the back. Uh, Pre McShane, who was, is ninth in points, 16th on the day, could probably gain some points. I'm not quite sure about too many spots, but we'll see how that shakes up. But uh, yeah, bad day from Jefferson, but he still takes home on the 27th. So yeah, bad day for him. I was looking for him to be a lap down, but he was not. So he kept that car in the lead lap, but a very frustrating day overall for JJ Motorsports is those three cars, just a nightmare of a race. Uh, the only one to be out from an accident was the 17 who plowed into the tire barriers with a 53, 21, 31, all a lap down. And two of those included cars that were in the last lap crash. We'll take a look at that. All right, with the white flag out, I think that was a mistake by the 21 goes it just completely misses the corner and into the tire barriers he goes rear end first and then Herman does the same uh quite the quite the wreck there for those two as they make a pretty hard impact into the wall so yeah side by side with another car that's not when you want to make a mistake and that ends up sending the 21 airborne off that corner and hard into the tire barriers, same with Lexi Herman, although a whole lot more sliding to be done before that impact. But uh, both drivers okay. And uh, yeah, late in the race, just aggression high, mistake prone. And that takes out two of the contenders here today. But what a race it was between the previous top three, Colin Teague, Roger Ray, and Lane Thomas put on a show. And Victor Nunez stole it as his attempted rise to the points continues. Um, and his bright spots have pretty much mainly been the road courses, as uh, he won the bend, of course, uh, but not too many uh, other chances to shine other than that. As a uh, sub 15th place finishes throughout the season for him. So Roger Ray is going to climb those points as well. As we head to a, another widely different type of racetrack in New Smyrna. A very, oh, I don't want to say very, but a somewhat similar race to Mesa Marin. As seeing as it is a half mile track, high banked, but not as much grip. You aren't going to see cars just wrap it around those corners. They're going to be, they're going to have some some looseness out of control a lot is going to be left up to the driver there to keep their car straight and it could lead to some crashes not like we didn't see some crashes at Mesa Marin but yeah this is another unknown in the schedule and a lot of the times that is what we like to see. As the family put on a great race, looking for another one here today. 
and afterwards we head to another super speedway in Daytona. But for now, thank you for watching the Game Renard Sportsman series. We'll see you next time.